question that I get asked very frequently is how do you choose the strum that you're going to play on any given song? Now, usually you'll have a song sheet that has the words and the chords printed out above the words. Uh, and if you're lucky enough to know the melody of the song, you're, you're, you're in good form. But you still have to know what strum, what rhythmic pattern or finger picking pattern, if it need be, we, you would use on that song. Now, that's kind of hard to teach in a way because a lot of it is kind of an art. It's kind of uh, comes through experience, through playing. And I really, really encourage you to play with other people because that's where it really starts to come together is when you can gather with a group and you can start experimenting with the strums. You know, there's no one answer to that question, which strum do you choose? Because every song can have a, a whole bunch of different patterns. They all work. They all work for that song. Let me give you an example here. The song Kumbaya. We all know that one. Kumbaya, my lord. Okay, now I'm going to play it with a swing shuffle. Sounds like this. Swing eighths. doesn't it with that swing eighth pattern but listen it can also work with the calypso pattern which is down down up up down up down kumbaya my lord kumbaya see how it works it works with that one kumbaya my lord also works with a straight eighth strum like this. Kumbaya, my lord. No syncopation. Kumbaya works equally well. Kumbaya, my lord. Or I could take the pattern which we call church lick that goes like this. Down, down, up, down. doesn't it? Kumbaya. So if you were to ask me what strum do you play on Kumbaya, I could say choose. You can use any of them. They all work. However, when you are playing as a group, as an ensemble, uh, you'll probably gravitate toward one strum that you're all sounding good together on. Now, I will say, however, that sometimes you can combine some of those strums. So you could have one person playing the swing eights and another person playing the church lick. They work together just fine. It just takes a time and patience to kind of play around, experiment with the different patterns. Uh, but the most important thing is you gotta learn those patterns too. You gotta learn the different strum patterns. And I've got a bunch of YouTube videos on strumming in 4-4 time and in 3-4 time. Now I haven't even gotten into finger picking here. I'll talk about that a little later in another video on how to choose the finger picking patterns. But back to my initial question, how do you choose the strum? You do it through just trial and error. You just experiment with it until it starts to feel right. You can always start off with just, just simply a, a thumb strum. Just down strokes of the thumb. Kumbaya, my lord. Just simple strum. Kumbaya. And then after you get the feel of it, then start experimenting. Try the swing pattern. Try the, the straight eighth pattern. Try the, the church lick pattern. Try the, uh, the calypso pattern. Any of them. And eventually you'll find the one that feels right. And like I say, if you play with a group of, of other players, uh, you're going to really begin to uh, assimilate by osmosis and you know, into your bones, into your into the muscle memory of your fingers. You're going to get the, the 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 sense of what those drums are going to be. So after a point, you don't have to even think. You just start playing. You just start playing a strum, and you and you'll know uh, intuitively right away what the strum's going to be. So we're going to be talking more about this on how to choose a strum. This is a big question. 
with a lot of players. So I hope this has helped. Happy strumming.